From the birth of the franchise all the way to now, the Marlins haven't had good ownership. It all started with Wayne Huizenga, the man who gutted the team immediately after they won their first World Series in 1997, just four years after their first ever season. John Henry then took over, didn't last very long, and went on to buy the Boston Red Sox. And I'd say that's worked out pretty well. As for the Marlins, they'd actually go on to win yet another World Series under their new owner Jeffrey Loria in 2003. It was mostly an entirely new team, and one that would have eventually also be gutted, this time by Loria of course. 2017 rolled around and the Marlins would be sold again to their fourth ownership group, this time led by businessman Bruce Sherman and Yankees legend Derek Jeter. Now although Jeter was all anyone could talk about, he only owned a 4% stake in the franchise. With that being said, Jeter was still named the CEO and someone who would oversee day to day operations with the team, so that's exactly what he did. A ton of moves were made with the team unpopular moves for sure, but he made them anyway. 2017 National League MVP Giancarlo Stanton was traded, so was Christian Yelich and Marcelo Zuna, and skip ahead years later and the Marlins actually have a solid team. At the time of when Sherman and Jeter took over, the Marlins had no pitching. Now, they have some good pitching and overall pieces that can lead to something greater. So maybe Jeter's plan, the one that was getting tons of backlash, was working after all. Except Jeter is no longer even with the Marlins, because he chose to step down as the CEO. It was very odd and sudden. Jeter seemed to come in with a plan of what he wanted done, was getting that plan done, hired a new GM for the team in Kim NG after the 2020 season, and things were just starting to come together. And then he leaves? Hmm. Well, blame Nick Castellanos. Dude ruins everything. Okay, not really, but you'll understand why I mentioned him soon. Thanks to podcast host and former Yankees teammate of Derek Jeter, CC Sabathia, we have context on the sudden departure from Miami. Throughout Major League Baseball, there are different types of owners, but what it comes down to are the ones who genuinely care about the team that they own, like Steve Cohen or Magic Johnson and the rest of the Dodgers ownership group. And then you have owners who only genuinely care about the money they can make from owning a team, like Bob Castellini, the owner of the Cincinnati Reds. Derek Jeter did not want to follow suit of an ownership like the Reds and wanted to spend, but he also understood that you can't just throw money at players and expect to win, and do so consistently. You have to build a good and deep farm system, draft, develop, and trade for young players who can help your team for years to come. And this is exactly what Jeter did. It may have seemed like he wanted to tank the team for some reason at first, but when you see all of the talent the team has now, pitching and hitting wise, a lot of what the team has done since he took control makes sense. According to Sabathia, Derek Jeter had lined it up for this past offseason to be the one where they started spending more, and they actually did, a little bit at least. They signed guys like Avicel Garcia and Jorge Soler while trading for Joey Wendell to help out the offense. Those are solid moves to make, but nothing crazy, nothing blockbuster-esque. Jeter wanted and expected more. I mentioned Nicholas Castellanos earlier, and that's because he is a player in particular that Jeter wanted, someone who of course ended up signing a big deal with an in-division rival, and I'm sure that probably didn't sit well with Jeter with how much he seemingly wanted him. In Jeter's goodbye statement, this is the exact quote that perfectly lines up with what Sabathia was talking about, quote, The vision for the future of the franchise is different than the one I signed up to lead. Now is the right time for me to step aside as a new season begins. End quote. When Jeter first bought a stake in the team, he planned to build the Marlins to a point where he can start spending money. They got to that point, and that's likely where the vision for the future he mentioned in the statement changed. Only time will tell if the Marlins decide to spend big in the coming years, but as of right now, they seem to not want to do that, and that is ultimately what drove Derek Jeter away. <laughs> 